All right, guys, today we are going to be doing a project. So you should have gotten a big piece of paper. And on that big piece of paper, we are going to be doing something called um, define and draw. So if you like drawing, this is great for you. If you don't like drawing, I'm really sorry, but this is just going to be part of the way that it goes. So you're going to take your big paper and the first thing you're going to do is fold it in half. So you need to make sure that it lines up correctly. So grab your paper and get that done. If you need to hit pause before we move on because you're not done with that, go ahead and do that now. All right, at that point, you are going to be making your project up and down long ways. So we're going to be doing on the top part, we're going to be going across and we are going to use a pencil. And this is going to be a plant cell. So you're going to write very neatly, but fairly large. Now this is going to be graded, so I do expect that it, it is extremely neat. So you're gonna write plant cell, and then off to the side here, I would like you to write by, and then put these two dots, a colon. Then you're gonna go ahead and put your name. So my name is Julie. And I'm gonna put my last initial, and then I'm going to write my room number. So room, one, one, one. That's my room number. So you need to know your home room number. So if you're in Mrs. Bombeck's room, that's 109. If you're in Mr. Wilson's room, that's room 110. If you're in Mrs. Lanchek's room, that is 112. If you're in Mrs. Girardi's room, that's 114. If you're in Mr. Anderton's room, that's 113. And if you're in Mrs. Howard's room, it's room 111. So that needs to go up at the top of your paper. Now, you folded your paper in half, so where that crease is, that is going to be your next cell, and you're going to write animal cell, nice and neat, fairly large. All right, so you must do this in pencil before you go and do anything else. So now I'm going to fold my paper kind of backwards so that I'm only looking at one section at a time. It's just going to make it easier to manage. So as I'm doing this, I need a picture that is really big. It's going to take up the majority of the center, but I need to leave a little bit of room on each side where my hands are because I'm going to be defining the parts of the cell. So remember, a plant cell is made up of straight parts. So you're going to draw something that has some straight lines. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, but it needs to be made up of straight lines. So there's what I drew. Nothing too exciting. So straight lines. Um, you can just draw a giant rectangle if that's what you want. But look how big this is. There is not a lot of room on this side, and there's not a lot of room on this side. So it needs to be pretty big. If I see something drawn like this, that's this size, that's going to have points marked off because your picture needs to be nice and big. You're basically making a poster. See, this is why the good Lord invented erasers. So when we do something that we don't like, we can take it off. All right, so if this is the outside of my cell. We'll call that the cell membrane. And a plant has another outside, which is the cell wall. So I'm going to go around this. You don't have to make yours the same shape, but you need to go around it. Okay, so this outside part is going to be the cell wall. So this from here to here, if this was all colored in, this would be the cell wall. And then this line on the inside is the cell membrane. So the first thing I'm going to do now is write the word cell wall. and I'm going to underline cell wall. So I've written it neatly. I've written it fairly large because this is a poster, so you're not gonna have itty bitty writing here. I'm doing it in pencil, so if I make a mistake, I can erase it. And I'm going to get the definition from my notes of what I'm writing. So it surrounds and protects
a plant cell. So notice it's pretty big here. All right, then I'm going to draw an arrow to what the cell wall is. So the cell wall is this inside part. So I'm going to make my arrow. And I'll go over it with a marker or crayon or a colored pencil when I'm done. All right, next thing that we're going to draw is it has plant cells have a huge vacuole or a huge stomach. And so that is kind of whoop. That's how I'm making mine, kind of looks like a swimming pool almost. That is going to be the vacuole. It's really big inside a plant. Remember, they need to hold more water because they don't know when they're going to get their next meal. They don't know when Mother Nature is going to rain again. So I'm going to write the word vacuole. I'm going to underline it, and I am going to define it. It stores water. and nutrients along with waste. So make sure you've written neatly. If I can't read it, then I can't grade it. It needs to be spelled correctly. You're getting this out of your notes or out of your book. So there's no reason that things should be spelled incorrectly because you should be copying it from somewhere that where you spelled it correctly. And once again, I'm going to draw an arrow to what I have drawn there. All right, the next thing that we're going to need to add is these things and we're going to make them green when the time comes but they're these little bead things and they're the chloroplasts so i'm going to draw an arrow probably should have done that at the end but here i am doing it at the beginning and i'm writing chloroplasts I made my arc a little too long. I'm not sure what I was doing there. Okay, chloroplast, I'm underlining it. It uses energy. From sunlight. To make sugar. which is the food for the plant. Right, so on our plant cell, these are the three words that you need to have defined, written. You have a nice big plant cell drawn, but you still have to put in the other parts of the plant cell. So remember, there is a nucleus. I don't know why I draw my nucleus like an eyeball. You do not have to, but that's how I'm drawing mine. And I'm just going lightly in pencil because I'm going to color this in later on. We have the mitochondria, which have all the energy, and they have the lines of energy. And I'm going to put another one down here. All right. And then um, everything that's back here filling in this space is the cytoplasm. So now I have my plant cell drawn. I'll get back to that later. Now I'm going to take and flip it over and I'm going to draw my animal cell. Once again, I'm going to need room on each side for my animal cell. Now, an animal cell does not have straight lines, so it's more blobbish, and it's quite large. So that's how I'm drawing mine. And the things that you need to list on the animal cell are you need that nucleus, So I'm going to put that over here. And draw an arrow to your nucleus. 
and then you're going to define it. I'm not going to do that for you right now because you're going to have to do that part. I'm going to need to draw some mitochondria, mm -hmm. my energy, mm -hmm. and I'm going to define mitochondria. So I need to add that. Oh, I ran out of room, so I'm going to erase it. Good thing I have my eraser. Got to shorten that line up because my handwriting was too big. Okay, so mitochondria, and you're going to write the definition of mitochondria. Then we did not write cell membrane yet, so that's the outside here. So the cell membrane is just right on the outside. And I am going to write the definition underneath here for cell membrane. And then all the stuff that fills in the inside, that cytoplasm. I'm going to write the definition here. And the cytoplasm is right here. It's all this stuff on the inside. Now there's a couple things that we have to include in our animal cell that we don't have drawn yet. And they are these little things, they're the vacuoles. So they have mini stomachs in them. So at this point, after I have drawn everything, written these out and written my definitions, getting them from my book, or I can get them from my notes, making sure everything is spelled correctly and I like what I have, then it is time to color this in. Now your words that you did in pencil, you do not need to do anything with. You may leave those in pencil. If you would like to go over them with something else and you have time, that's the last thing that you do. The only place you may use marker is to outline. So you could outline, you could go around the outside of the mitochondria, you could go around the outside of the nucleus, but your coloring needs to be done in colored pencil or in crayon. So let me show you the one that I did as my practice one. So here is my plant cell. As you can see that I have my arrows going to everything. I have colored everything in nice and neatly. I did have time, so I went over my pencil and then I took an eraser and just erased anything that was sticking out once I was done. Then my animal cell, I went ahead and colored everything in and labeled everything as it was. So you can come back to this video at any time to look and see what you need, but this is what you need to get all of your points. So you need a title, you need your name, and I can see that this is missing my room number, so I'm going to fill that in. You need to put your room number. If you don't have your room number, I'm gonna take a point off for that. On a plant cell, you need the three words, cell wall, vacuole, and chloroplast, along with their definitions and arrows going to the right spots. On the animal cell, you need cytoplasm, cell membrane, nucleus, and mitochondria. You need the correct definition, and you need the arrows going to the correct places. So you're going to be graded on, is it nice and neat? Can I read it? Is your spelling correct? Did you include all of the things that you needed to have? So good luck, and you can come back to this video if you need it.